Welcome to the EXP Group's discussion of SEMA paper P2. Today we're going to talk a little bit about limiting factors. And the context is if we have a single limiting factor which is identified, uh, which somehow imposes a, a bottleneck in, in a production process, then it's necessary not only to identify or know about it, but to be able to quantify the implications and to plan our production around that bottleneck. Let's take a case here. Let's say we have three products, X, Y, and Z, with uh, costs as shown and contributions per unit of product as indicated. It looks like if we had unlimited demand for all three products, we would want to orient our production towards product Z, which maximizes the contribution per unit. At first glance, that seems to be a reasonable assumption. Now let's impose a more restrictive uh, condition. Let's say that labor hours are limited to 500 and the labor costs $2 per hour. Let's have a look with fresh eyes now at the implications of this um, uh, scarce resource of labor hours. What we can do is we can, on this line here, calculate the number of hours required per unit of product. And we can see that the number of hours to produce one unit of X is five hours, for Y it's eight hours, and for Z it's ten hours. And we can now recalculate our contribution no longer on a contribution per unit basis, but now we're going to alter the basis and say for each hour of labor that we use, how much dollar contribution do the three products produce? In the case of X, the contribution per hour now is going to be $15 per unit divided by the five labor hours required to produce that unit. In other words, it's going to be $3 per hour of labor. For Y, the same process, the same logic shows that we will generate $2 of contribution for every hour of labor used producing product Y. And for Z, the same conclusion. It's also $2 per hour of contribution generated when we produce Z. Now we can look at uh, our conclusions based on this bottleneck and it looks like, based on the scarce resource of labor hours, we're actually, for every time we, we employ a labor hour producing X, we produce $3 of contribution, which exceeds both Y and Z. In other words, we would favor or rank production uh, of X first, and we would be actually indifferent between Y and Z and if we have uh, remaining uh, hours of, of labor. In fact, we would orient all our production towards X and produce 100 units of X, which will require 500 labor hours. And in this way, we would maximize our contribution. Of course, if there was a limit in addition to the demand for X, then we would produce X up to the maximum limit, let's say 80 units, which requires uh, five times 80 or 400 labor hours. And then the remaining 100 hours could be used for producing other products according to the ranking. So here's a summary of the steps to be followed when uh, working out what the optimal production plan has to be based on a restrictive a condition um, or, or as, uh, uh, as represented by a scarce resource or in other words a bottleneck in the production process.